you now raise the bar. You can't go backwards, meaning this team has to win their division this year. He will just let it rip downfield, and it is a laser. And you're like, yeah, that's why he was the number one high school player, the number one college player. We got to do this every week. Yep. Every week. Great job, that's fellas. It. Let's enjoy this Great flight. Team. Jags on three. One, two, three. Jags! Jags! The Jacksonville Jaguars are doing very, very big things out there in London, bringing the fans to consecutive international victories. This is big, right? You can win in a different country. I need you to start winning games in Jacksonville as well. Remember in 2021 when they shocked everyone by upsetting the Buffalo Bills? Well, guess what? They did it again. This time, they secured the bag with a 25 to 20 victory. Throughout the entire game, no matter what you might think, Jacksonville was in the driver's seat. The Bills, they tried coming back in the second half, but Jacksonville's offense came alive exactly when they needed to. They put points on the board, and that defense, they kept Josh Allen, who's one of the best in the business, and the Bills' high-flying offense in check. And now, let's talk about momentum. Jacksonville's heading back from London with not one, but two consecutive victories that we discussed. But hey, the next challenge, it's Indy, your rival, and they're out for blood. But for now, let's focus on Jacksonville's impressive victory against the Bills. And one thing that kind of frustrates me is that they kept calling this game a quote-unquote upset. And I'm like, hmm, I think that the better team won. The Jags, one minute, they're on fire against the Bills. The next, they're ice cool. Second week in a row, we've seen this pattern. And there is an eyebrow raiser. The Jags, for some reason, can't get points on their first drive. Thankfully, they usually get it together by their second. And then they got that field goal and waited. Waited till the fourth quarter when ETN took matters into his own hands, darting to the end zone and giving Jacksonville a comfortable lead, if only for a little while. Now, Trevor Lawrence, kid's good, kid's great. Now, it's funny because I've started to see in the news all of these conversations of who's better, Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence. And it's so unfortunate and it's so disrespectful to T-Law on what he has done and how great he has been for the Jaguars. Doing his thing, even when things get tough, but man, that offensive line, they've got some issues. Bills have a scary defense, no doubt. But Cam Robinson, you gotta do a lot better than whatever you think you're doing. He had a long day trying to handle AJ Epinesa, who was absolutely wreaking havoc. And don't get me started on Harrison and those penalties. I get it. He's a rookie out of Oklahoma. But those penalties from Harrison, it's going to hurt the team. But hey, let's give credit where credit is due. Whether we're talking about Calvin Whitley or Christian Kirk, those guys were on point. And Christian Kirk has started to change my mind on if he deserved that money. I'm starting to think he did. Catching nearly everything that came their way. Ridley, he reminded us of that week one magic, grabbing 122 yards off seven catches. And Kirk, six out of eight targets, 72 yards, solid game from him too. The wide receivers, they're not the problem here. It's that offensive line that needs to be consistent. And I really do love the brilliant mind of Doug Peterson. And I love that his new project is Trevor Lawrence. I don't have high hopes for this offense. I have the highest hopes for this offense. But unfortunately, they're like a car that won't start in cold weather. For two weeks now, they're all gas at the start and then nothing. And here's a head scratcher. All season, they can't put up points on their first drive. If you can't put up points on your first drive, it's all game script. It's pre-recorded information of how y'all are going to attack the defense. If the Jacksonville Jaguars want to be taken seriously in the same names of the Kansas City Chiefs, the Philadelphia Eagles, the San Francisco 49ers. If the Jacksonville Jaguars want to be in the conversations of the top teams in the National Football League, you have got to consistently put up the numbers that everyone believes you're capable of doing. On the other side, defense wasn't as flashy as last week, but they were clutch. And that's all you need for a defense. Ben don't break. Keeping the Bills out of scoring territory when it counted. Sure, Stephon, he's going to get his. He got his 100 yards and he got his touchdown. The Jaguars had a couple of big question marks going into their offseason. The O-line and the pass rush. Fast forward to week five and guess what? Both of these issues are staring them right in the face. Sure, they didn't sack Josh Allen, but they kept him from running wild. That O-line though... Lots of bumps and bruises for Mr. Trevor Lawrence. Killing the vibe every time the Jags got something going. That's where your frustration starts for your quarterback. That's where frustration starts for your running back and your receivers when you make big plays, but there's some unfortunate penalty or you have a big play opening, Cam Robinson, and you're not able to hold up your block. 
and you get your quarterback hit. I want to say this right here and right now. We've seen the unfortunate tale of Andrew Luck, and we're kind of seeing it slowly with Joe Burrow. If your offensive line cannot keep you up and healthy, there's a high percentage that you are going to end the career of Trevor Lawrence earlier than he would want. Of course, none of us want this. Doug Peterson's going to fix it. But here's where things get interesting. Jacksonville chose to flip the script in a few areas. The big one on third downs. They converted 10 of 18. I mean, that's a jump from their 31.4% average this season. And that 32 yarder on third and four with just over three minutes left, super duper clutch. We love it. Instead of punting and handing the Bills a golden ticket, Lawrence hooks up with Ridley driving deep into Buffalo territory. And ETN, I'm going to say this to you right now. I didn't think it was going to work. I dogged out the Jaguars for drafting you in the first round. And all you are beautifully doing, ETN, is telling me to shut up. And I appreciate it. Speaking of Etienne, the man was everywhere. Even if we ignore his second trip to the end zone, the guy rushed 23 times for a whopping 132 yards. Seems like a clear formula here. When Etienne's firing on all cylinders, the whole squad is lit. Everybody is lit when Etienne is getting his. But the bottom line is the bottom line. Unfortunately, this team is going to go as far as the game scripts in the first drive and the offensive line wants to take them. It seems as if Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, and Ridley, and Kirk, and Evan Ingram, it looks like they're all on the same page. Offensive line, Doug Peterson, you gotta get your stuff together. Trevor Lawrence beautifully went 25 of 37 with a 315 yard and a touchdown performance. But here's the hiccup. The turnover is on sacks. Twice they coughed up the ball when they were sniffing the end zone. I understand Trevor Lawrence can't pass the ball, catch the ball, and block for himself. But one thing you can do, Trevor, is hold on to the ball. Now, this team is still very young, which unfortunately in the NFL, it's not really good enough for the average viewer, for the casual viewer. I understand that it's going to take a few more weeks, hopefully just one more season, for this team to truly gel the way I believe that they can and they should. These weapons on offense are rare. Look at what Bryce Young has in Carolina. Nothing compared what's happening in Jacksonville. All I've got to say is this. It seems as if the Jacksonville Jaguars have every tool, but they don't know how to use them yet. And they're using wrong tools at the wrong time. I want to leave the Jacksonville Jaguars with a little bit of legitimate hope that you have for your future. Doug Peterson, Super Bowl winning coach. For some reason, I guess people have forgotten about it. And no flack to Nick Foles, Carson Wentz, but Trevor Lawrence clears all of them. Doug Peterson created that fortress of an offensive line that the Eagles have today. He can do it again and will do it again. And you get Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne an offensive line, aka more time to make the right throw or the perfect cut. And you're going to tell me you're going to have Ridley running wild, knowing he has time because he has an awesome offensive line, along with Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. Yo, this team is going to, I believe, start turning more heads than ever before. You have the Prince in your palace. Do not ruin this Jacksonville. Please do not ruin this boy's career. Get it together. Keep stacking the wins week by week. The AFC South is yours. There is no reason why you should be losing this division. Kick the Colts ass next week. Get it done. Like, comment, subscribe.